Okay, so we've calculated all of those uh, values, those annual values of these various quantities that we've selected here. Um, now we're going to extract them, and uh, they are now available to plot. You can see the period is 1958 to 2012, and the quantities we have are the atmospheric water vapor, we have uh, ocean surface temperature, ocean ice cover, we've got the planetary albedo, we've got surface air temperature, we've got sea surface temperature. And we can start uh, plotting these and seeing what they look like. Uh, let's start out with the surface air temperature. So this is the global average surface air temperature for the model. And it should be plotting that up for us shortly. And there it is. So we can expand that window a little bit. Um, we can uh, change the scale here. So let's go from uh, 9 8.5 to uh, 23 on the vertical scale, just to get a finer uh, um, a vertical scale on this. So uh, the red curve shows us uh, how land, average global land temperatures are changing over time in the model. Uh, the blue curve shows us how the open ocean temperatures are changing the model. Ocean, open ocean is going to be warmer, as you can see, by several degrees then uh, land, it's the part of the ocean surface that isn't frozen. Um, and the ocean, uh, in general, uh, warms up more than the land and is warmer uh, than land on average because it doesn't go to as high latitudes, um, in particular in the southern hemisphere. So uh, ocean temperatures are going to be warmer than land temperatures. The open ocean, the blue curve, is warmer than the full ocean, which uh, includes uh, ice-covered regions of the ocean. It's the green curve. And the black is the global average temperature. It's the average of all the regions, whether they're open ocean, ice-covered ocean, or land. Um, that's what the black curve represents. Uh, let's uh, zoom in on that curve. And... Uh, So we can see we started out in 1958 with a global average temperature of about 13.8 degrees Celsius, um, roughly what uh, the global average temperature um, uh, is uh, prior to um, the uh, increase in CO2 that's taken place since then. Um, and we've warmed up by 20 10 or 2012 to a temperature that's close to 17.8 degrees. So we've gone from about 13.8 to about 17.8. Uh, we've warmed up by about 4 degrees Celsius in response to that instantaneous CO2 doubling that took place in 1958. So you can see how long it's taking uh, the global temperature to equilibrate to that increase in CO2. Um, many decades. Although we can see that we are asymptotically approaching a, a new uh, equilibrium value. If we were to extend this uh, several decades into the future, as it turns out, we would probably see a net warming of 4.5 degrees Celsius relative to that initial temperature of 13.8 degrees Celsius. Um, and that is consistent with the fact that this particular model, uh, the GIS climate model, the NASA Goddard Institute for Space Studies climate model from the 1980s, um, uh, has a relatively high uh, climate sensitivity of about 4.5 degrees Celsius equilibrium climate sensitivity for CO2 doubling. And that's consistent with the transient result that we're seeing here as the temperature is approaching uh, its equilibrium response to that uh, instantaneous CO2 doubling. Uh, but we can look at many other quantities in this model in addition to surface temperatures, and so that's what we'll do next.